in the book of Acts, the fourth chapter, the twelfth and the thirteenth verse, there is a word from the Lord. Beloved, if we open our hearts to receive the word today, I really believe that this word is going to bless our hearts. Acts chapter 4, verse 12 and verse 13. It reads, neither is there salvation in any other, for there is none other than the name of heaven and earth given among men, whereby we must be saved. And now when they saw the boldness of Peter and John and perceived that they were unlearned and ignorant men, they marveled. And they took knowledge of them that they had been with Jesus. This is the word of God. You may be seated. Verse 13 is our verse that we really want to focus on. It says, Now, when they saw the boldness of Peter and John, and perceived that they were unlearned and ignorant men, they marveled. And they took knowledge of them they, that they had been with Jesus. My beloved brothers and sisters, we want to use for a thought this morning associated with Jesus. Associated with Jesus. In association with Jesus. Or in association with the Christ or with the Savior. Being in the company of Jesus. And have you ever been in Jesus' company? Have you ever been in the presence of Jesus? And is it evident or is there any evidence that you have been with Jesus. Can anyone tell or can anyone detect that you have been with Jesus? Beloved, there is a saying that birds of a feather flock together. That people with the same interests or from the same group like to be associated with each other. A fisherman associate with other fishermen. Yep. And hunters associate with other hunters. And politicians associate with other politicians. Criminals associate with other criminals. Sinners mm -hmm. associate with other sinners. And the ungodly associate with the ungodly. And Christians associate with other Christians and believers associate with other believers. And friends, whoever or whatever you associate with, you are more than likely to become. And if you associate with the wrong crowd, then you will become that crowd. If you associate with the world, then you will become worldly. If you associate with the devil, then you will become devilish. But if you associate with Jesus, you will become holy and righteous, full of the Spirit. That if you stay in his presence, then you will adopt his nature. You will adopt his philosophy. You will adopt his character. You will adopt his lifestyle. An association with Jesus is evidence of holiness. And holiness is proof of Jesus. That holiness signifies that one has been with Jesus. And holiness is evidence that one has opened his heart to Jesus. That holiness is evidence of the Holy Spirit. That holiness requires certain symptoms. That there must be Evidence and the Bible says, for faith is the substance of things hopeful. That it is the evidence uh -huh. of things 
spirit. And holiness is a symptom of the Holy Spirit. And the entire book of Acts is a testimony to the transformation that takes place in the life of a true follower of Jesus. And this transformation is from darkness to light. From flesh to spirit. And the book of Acts is the Lord Jesus Christ at work by the power of the Holy Spirit through the apostles. And its main purpose is to tell how Jesus' father was led by the Spirit spread the news about him throughout the world. The Bible says that Jesus told him to go witness for me in Jerusalem. He said, go be my witness in Judea and go be my witness in Samaria. He said, in fact, go throughout the world and be my witness. Yes. Yes. But when Jesus was taken up into heaven, he didn't cease from doing and teaching. That Jesus didn't retire, but Jesus is still at work. Uh -huh. But now from the vantage place of the right hand of God, uh -huh. that he is continuing to work through the Holy Spirit. And just as in the army when commands pass from one man to another, so the Lord Jesus Christ in working through the Holy Spirit. And by us staying in the Spirit, we maintain association with Jesus. By us staying in the Spirit, we maintain fellowship with Jesus. By us staying in the Spirit, we stay close to the heart of our Lord and this is how Jesus operates in you and I just as he operated in the apostles. Yes. Yes. Look, our, well, Acts chapter 4 is our focus for today. But to understand what's going on in Acts chapter 4, we have to recall what happened in chapter 3. And in chapter 3, Peter and John went to the temple to take part in prayer. And every day at the third, the sixth, and the ninth hour was a designated time for prayer. And as they approached the temple, a man lame from birth was being carried in. And then each day he was put beside the temple gate. The one called beautiful. And a man can make beautiful things. But man cannot improve himself. And of course man can do some trimming on the outside. He can cut his hair. He can have his nails manicured. He can take a bath every now and then. But man can never change the old nature which he has. And when the lame man saw Peter and John about to enter, he asked them for some money. He said, do, do you have some spare Change And Peter said, look at us. That Peter wanted him to hear what he had to say. Beloved, when the man of God is speaking, you ought to pay attention. When the man of God is speaking, you ought to give him your undivided attention. Yeah. Yeah. So he said, I don't have any money. But he said, silver and gold have I not, but I have something better. Than money. He said, in the name of Jesus, rise up and walk. And beloved, it's not, oh, it wasn't in the name of Muhammad, it wasn't in the name of Confucius or Buddha, but in the name of Jesus. And here you can see their association with Christ. Here, the, here you see evidence of them being with Jesus. And the Bible says immediately his feet and ankle bones received strength. That this was a miracle. That they could not have told him to rise up and walk if they didn't know Jesus to be a healer. Yeah. So again, they said, well, this was a miracle. And the man, he, he jumped up and he started walking and leaping and praising God. He instantly became a witness for Jesus Christ. And if God has done anything for you, then we must be a witness for Jesus Christ. 
Beloved, Jesus has strengthened some places in our lives. That we all have, have been weak and, and Jesus has given us strength. That all of us have been down. All of us have been out. But Jesus has come to all of us and given us strength and said, rise up and walk. He said, move forward. Keep moving forward. Keep pressing ahead. So again, how is the world going to know about our God if we don't tell them? That's right, that's right. So here it is that many people at the temple and they recognize that he was the man that sat at the gate. Okay. And now he's healed. Mm. You see, Peter saw his opportunity and address the crowd. That Peter delivered a, a powerful sermon reminding them of past prophecies and urging them to repent. But when you're doing the will of God, don't think everybody is going to be excited. Don't think everyone is going to celebrate. Not everyone is going to be glad that you got healed. Not everybody is going to be glad that you got your breakthrough. Not everybody is going to be glad that you got delivered. Not everyone is going to be glad that you met Jesus on that Roman throne. Apostle Paul said that every time I, I try to do right, evil is present. He said every time I try to do good, evil is present. That every time you try to serve God, the forces of evil are trying to pull you back. It's like a magnet trying to pull you back to sin. But I want to encourage you to never forget what's on the inside of you as a Christian is more powerful than anything in the world. The Bible says greater is the he that is in us than the he that is in the world. So beloved, Jesus himself and every time he did good, evil was present. And here came the Pharisees trying to stir up trouble, trying to stir up confusion, trying to catch Jesus in a lie, trying to attack his credibility. Yeah. Yeah. Beloved Peter and John are doing good, but evil is present. And Peter and John are, are doing what is right, but evil is present. Uh. And Peter and John are doing the work of the Lord, but evil is present. Yeah. Yeah. And on the day of Pentecost, Peter preached his first sermon and 3,000 souls were saved. But on this day, Peter preached his second sermon and 5,000 people were saved. And as a result, the apostles are arrested and put in prison. And this was at the instigation of the Sadducees. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And the reason for it was preaching the resurrection of Jesus Christ. So we're now in chapter 4. The Sadducees didn't believe in the resurrection. No. They didn't believe in spirits. They didn't believe in, in the afterlife. So basically, they didn't believe in Jesus. Mm -hmm. I'll say that again. I said the Sadducees didn't believe in the resurrection. Mm -hmm. They didn't believe in spirits. They didn't believe in the afterlife. So basically, they didn't believe in Jesus. Mm -hmm. They're saying that Jesus is a liar. So the Sadducees were against preaching the resurrection of Jesus. And the apostles were saying that you don't want us to preach the resurrection, but when he sent word to us to meet him in Galilee, that we saw him for ourselves. He came and had fellowship with us, and he commissioned us to preach the gospel. Yeah, yeah. So we have many infallible proofs that he showed himself alive after his death. Yes. In fact, there are ten recorded appearances of Jesus after his resurrection. Mm -hmm. And they say, well, you want us to obey 
wisdom and courage and the words to speak at that time. Mm -hmm. And listen to what he says. He says it, it is by the name of Jesus. Mm -hmm. He said the one you crucified. Uh -huh. The one you killed. The one you hated. The one you despised. And the one that God raised from the dead which proves he was the Messiah. Uh -huh. He said the stone that you built is rejected has now become the cornerstone. And the most important stone you didn't want to be a part of it. The foundation is the most important stone but you rejected the foundation. You built it on mud. You built it on clay. But you didn't build it on Jesus Christ. So he said there is no salvation in no one else. That God has given no other name under the heaven by which we must be saved. Yeah. And Lord, when the Holy Spirit is present, you can just tell it how it is and you don't have to be afraid because Jesus will empower you to do exactly what he said. Yeah. Yeah. I want to encourage you today that Jesus will give you the equipment to be bold and courageous and lift the devil right in the eye and tell him to go. Jesus, and is it evident? Is there any 
out of this. And beloved, I'm getting out of the way, but this is why Jesus is the standard of holiness. That in his, in his humanity and his deity, Jesus was totally and absolutely sinless. That Jesus' life was pure and perfectly holy. And he never looked with lust. He never spoke an untrue or unkind, frivolous word. He never entertained an impure thought. And he was never accused by conscience. He was never out of step with the will of God. And his time was never wasted. He was never involved in any scandal. His influence was never bad. His judgment was never wrong. And he never had to apologize for anything he did or retract a single thing he said. And listen to this. He lived on earth a total of 12,000 days and all of them were a marvel of holiness. He was holy, harvest, undefiled, separate from the world. I just want to know, don't you want to be associated with a man like this? Don't you want to be associated with the Christ? Of the, don't you want some of that to rub off on you? See, beloved, if we've been with Jesus, then you ought to smell like him. You ought to talk like him. You ought to look like him. You ought to live like him. You ought to think like him. You ought to forgive like him. You ought to obey like Jesus. Said if we're associated with Jesus, then there must be some evidence, there must be some symptoms, there must be some proof. And right now I'm challenging the church that if we're following Jesus, somebody better be able to tell that I know Jesus and he knows my name, he knows my address, he knows my phone number. So may God bless you and may God keep you. Remember, the Pharisees or the Sadducees said they recognized that they had been with Jesus. And there's one thing about the, the Sadducees, they had more degrees than a thermometer. But you couldn't find no spirit. You couldn't detect no spirit. You couldn't find Jesus. That's why they was against Jesus. They, they, they had all this education, but they didn't know who Jesus was. And the sad part about it is he was in their presence. Don't let Jesus be in your presence and you don't know who he is. Amen. So may God bless you and may God keep you. Amen. There may be some 